The technical training of the basic striking and footwork movements is very important to become a good table tennis player. But which exercises should be played and how and in which order to find the best and economic way to develop from beginner to advanced? In this video you will watch 10 levels or exercises that should be played with beginners. There will be two further videos, part 2 and 3, to show a complete beginner training. In this training system the players qualify for the next level or exercise when they performed 10 successful strikes, which is good for motivation. In exercise 1 the so-called forehand counter is played diagonal. The longer way in the diagonal gives the player more reaction time. Since the ball contact is central or hard, the ball does not rotate so much which makes it easier to play with a partner because a lot of mistakes in table tennis happen because of the rotation of the ball. The central ball contact, the range of motion of a quarter and the weight transfer are main characteristics of the forehand counter. During level or exercise 2, the backhand counter should be performed 10 times diagonal. A parallel foot position, a stable elbow position, a central ball contact and an end of the forward swing that points towards the desired placement of the ball are main characteristics to perform this technique successfully. For exercise 3, players are stepping or jumping around the backhand corner to play one by one the backhand and forehand counter. This exercise is recommendable to emphasize the necessity to train a good footwork in table tennis and to be able to play the forehand from the backhand side in suitable situation when a more powerful forehand is needed. Sometimes this footwork is called the pivot footwork. The wrist movement during backhand counter and the rotation of the shoulder axis during forehand counter are focus points during this exercise for beginners. Pay also attention that beginners don't step beside the table but move behind the table during the forehand counter. In level 4 the backhand push is performed. Backhand strikes are sometimes easier to learn for beginners because there are similar daily movements like writing and eating that are done in front of the body like the backhand strikes in table tennis. On the other hand, during backhand push the ball is rotating backwards and beginners have sometimes problems to find the right blade inclination and movement plane. It is good to have a training partner who can play the ball slowly with adequate rotation and placement to help the beginners. During exercise 5 the forehand push is performed. Since the ball is slower because of the backspin and the longer way in the diagonal, this situation is easier for beginners. On the other hand, the unknown movement besides the body with an open blade makes this strike not so easy for beginners. Sometimes it helps to start with short balls to get a feeling for the backspin, the blade and arm position. In level or exercise 6 the forehand push has to be executed diagonal and the backhand push parallel one by one. This training method is called combined regular because two strikes are combined in a regular situation. Technical focus points are the soft ball contact with an open blade so that backspin is created, a stable elbow in front of the body and an end of the forward swing that is pointing towards the net and not sidewards. A typical mistake during beginner learning is that the elbow is not stable in front of the body during both movements. In the backhand side the elbow is often pulled sidewards during the forward swing and in the forehand side it is pulled backwards during the backward swing or even between the strikes the elbow is pulled near the body. As a consequence 
there is a lack of consistency concerning flight curve, placement, speed and rotation of the ball. Exercise 7 is the same as exercise 6 but with a different placement so that the forehand push is placed parallel and the backhand push diagonal. That's because beginners should learn to control a good placement right from the beginning to be able to train with each other or to make points with a good placement. Since the placement variation is a result of small adaptations of technical details of the movements, it is also good for the technical fine-tuning of the strikes. When players perform this level system for a few times, it is also recommendable to raise the intensity of speed and rotation of the balls so that technical, tactical and physical characteristics of the players develop equally. Exercises 8 and 9 are the same as exercises 6 and 7 but in an irregular manner. This change from the combined regular to the combined irregular training method has a big impact on the kind of training stimulus and the following training adaptations. Now the players do not know where the ball is placed from the training partner. As a consequence they have to react and to anticipate to reach the ball. For a good reaction and anticipation players have to focus on details of their perceptions of the opponent's movement and ball. This needs mental efforts or energy and leads to good training adaptations so that reaction and anticipation as decisive abilities for table tennis further develop. In addition, it is observable that beginners have not only problems to start early enough to the next ball, which can be attributed to the underdeveloped mental reaction and anticipation processes, but also have problems with their motor skills like moving sidewards with bended knees and in a balanced manner on the forefoot. During level or exercise 10, players try to perform 10 forehand topspins without a mistake to qualify for level 11. Focus points are a brushing ball contact with creating topspin, a stable and closed blade angle and incline plane and a ball contact that is besides but in front of the body. See the next levels or exercises in part 2 of this video clip series. Thanks for watching, have fun during training and please subscribe and ring the bell.